Assalamualaikum everybody, hello, welcome to Thirsty Soul, thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, today's video is just going to be a bit of a chit chat about um, my journey to becoming a psychologist, doing my psychology degree and any tips and bits of advice that I think would be useful for any of you guys who are trying to embark on that journey. So, um, the first thing I would like to do is kind of rewind back to choosing my I was going to say choosing my A-levels, yeah. So the first, um, my first kind of branch into psychology was doing A-levels in psychology. And A-levels, for those of you who don't know, is kind of the prerequisite to university in the UK. So I chose um, psychology out of one of four of my A-levels. And I kind of, I never knew really much about psychology before that. And I really just loved it. I loved learning about childhood attachments, about... Um, mental health, about social conformity, why people obey. Those of you who don't know about Milgram's experiment and Zimbardo's prison experiment, Google it. Very, very interesting stuff. So I just really found my love for it from there and decided to do, do it in um, university. Um, and when I was deciding which university to go to, I didn't really put much thought. I just thought, you know what, I just need enough UCAS points. I need, and you know, I was busy worrying about my A-levels and getting um, good grades to get into university. And I think this is one mistake I made because I didn't see myself as a customer. I didn't see myself as, you know what, I'm paying nine grand for uni every year. I need to really pay attention to what modules are being offered to me. And that is one bit of advice I would give any of you guys who are doing any degree to be honest look at the modules don't just think because it's a psychology degree or business degree it's all the same it's not all the same psychology is very very vast and every university is going to specialize in different areas of psychology so for example the university i went to university of essex they specialize more in memory um, cognition, language, attention, and that was an area of psychology that I wasn't particularly passionate about. So I didn't really find a lot of people in my department that could give me good advice about clinical psychology and counselling psychology. So I think this is something I would advise any of you guys to really look into. Look into the modules. You are a customer. When you finish university and you start paying off that debt, you're going to realise actually, or you're going to realise or think, did I get enough value for my money, you know? So I think that's something that you should pay attention to. Anywho, moving on. So, started university. I absolutely hated my first year of my degree. Um, I was not prepared for the amount of statistics that I would be doing. And again, I think this is something that a lot of people don't realise because when you do a psychology degree, nobody thinks of statistics. You don't realise that psychology in the West is all about evidence. It's about having an evidence base for whatever you do. So you've got to prove it. And the way to prove it is by doing statistics. So statistics is a core part of doing a psychology degree and even more importantly, if you become a psychologist. So I wasn't really feeling my first year. I actually changed my degree to English literature and history. And any of you guys who have African parents or ethnic parents will know they were not too happy with that. My whole family was calling me up like, what do you think you're doing with your life? And I buckled down the pressure and I changed back and um, I continued doing my psychology degree. Alhamdulillah, I have no regrets. And um, by the time I got to my third year of my degree, I really, really started to enjoy it. I did. Um, I was able to choose optional modules outside my department. I chose counselling skills and counselling skills with children and adolescents and I managed to have a placement with that and got to do a bit more kind of Freudian kind of things and delving into people's underlying reasons for their behaviours and different theories which I really loved as well as um, doing um, modules in just general psychotherapy and understanding the different therapies that were available uh, for people to use. So after I finished my degree um, I was like, yay, thank God, I finished, I can finally do all the things I want to do in life and not have to study. But then the post, as people call it, I think the post-depression or the post-blues graduation, or there's a formal name for it, but I don't know. But basically it means you finish uni, you get a reality check, and you start to feel really, really bad about your life and you can't get a job. And that happened to me, I graduated, I thought, oh yeah, everything's good. 
that I'm sitting down day after day after day applying for jobs, not getting anything. Um, you know, and it just really starts to demoralize you and starts to make you feel like, what have I done with my life? Have I chosen the right course? Have I done this? Have I done that? But um, Alhamdulillah, by the time it reached about August, I started getting job interviews and um, I got a job for working in research and mental health, but then I had to move halfway across the country. And I think, again, this is something that a lot of people don't tell you about. Because a psychology degree, A, does not qualify you to become a psychologist, and B, means that you have to, in order to become a psychologist, you've got to do some postgrad, postgraduate. So this postgraduate actually means that you have to do a doctorate, which is a PhD, a professional PhD, if you want to go into clinical counselling, educational or forensic psychology. So because with clinical psychology, especially and educational, it's extremely competitive because it's funded by the NHS, which is the National Health Service in the UK, you've got to kind of you can't just get experience like okay let me just get six months experience one year experience you've got to get like three four years experience in order to stand the chance to get onto the doctorate so this means that you've got thousands and millions and millions sorry people you know when your nose just gets itchy at like the most awkward times anyways <laughs> um you've got millions and thousands of other psychology graduates competing for the same same positions so that they can get the experience to get onto the doctorate so i realized very soon that i couldn't just apply to london which is where i was living i had to apply out and um, in my case it meant i've ended up moving halfway across the country um, to live in with a, um, in an area that i completely don't know just in order to get that experience sorry i don't know why my nose is so itchy people sorry anyways um so when I did that, you know, it's a huge move and I think it's a move that I guess that it's not for everybody but you've got to be prepared that if this is what I really want to do, I actually want to become a psychologist, then I might have to move and I have other friends who have had to move as well. But if you want to do a psychology degree and maybe you don't necessarily want to become a psychologist, you want, you're just interested in psychology and you want to branch off to do other things later on, then kudos to you. But if you want to become a psychologist, be prepared for the sacrifice. That is one thing that I do. I never thought I would have to move so far away from home to pursue my career, but it's a reality for most people. So um, again, I just want to emphasize that you've got to do a doctorate, which means that you're, you're, the road to becoming a psychologist is equivalent to really becoming a doctor. So by the time you do your degree, get three, four years experience, do your PhD, you know, you're going to be in your late 20s. Are you prepared to do that? Are you that passionate about it? You know, it's not just about sitting there and being like, okay, come and tell me all about your problems. No, especially if you're doing more, clin um, if you're not doing clinical psychology or counselling psychology, you could do health psychology, you could do sports psychology, you could do occupational psychology, you could do so many different types. I will try and put a slide up of the different types of psychology and the routes to get in there. If I can figure out the editing to do that, I will definitely do that. Um, because I think it's such a long road and you really need to be prepared for exactly what it entails. And also, just before I finish off this video, I want to kind of dispel some myths, you know. A lot of, especially those of us who come from ethnic backgrounds, our parents and things like that, they don't really know the roots. They don't really know much about psychology. They just know about medicine, engineering, uh, what is it? Medicine, engineering, accounting and being a lawyer. Apart from that, they don't know anything else. So they think, oh, become a psychologist, what's that? You're just going to work with, you know, um, you're just going to work in mental health basically. Psychology is so much more vast than that. Or they think you're not going to get a job. There are, there are um, designed routes to becoming a psychologist in the UK and in other Western countries. And psychology is an integra integral, <laughs> I'm trying to find the right word, is a core part of the healthcare system in the UK, the prison system and other uh, public health services as well as some people go into private practice. So there are definitely jobs in psychology. 
it's just becoming a psychologist is hard but once you actually become a psychologist there's plenty 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 of jobs waiting for you so it's really about being patient enough and if you think that oh i want to become a psychologist oh i want to read people's minds and i just want to sit down and talk to people then psychology might not be the best thing for you you might uh, prefer to go into counseling or prefer to um go into other um, careers in health and social care and the route to becoming a counsellor is very different to becoming a psychologist in the UK. Becoming a counsellor, you don't have to do a doctorate, you could do a degree or a master's, you don't have to do a doctorate at all. And counselling, you might do psychodynamic, you might want to be a psychodynamic counsellor, a humanistic counsellor, an existential counsellor, whereas a psychologist you will probably be able you would maybe sorry do definitely you would know how to do cbt psychodynamic and maybe sister systemic um, therapy which is family therapy so the roots are different the core is different psychology is all about proof you do statistics you have an evidence base based counselling you don't necessarily have to focus on doing an evidence base it's more qualitative data it's more about learning people's experiences so i know it's quite complicated and what i said might not make sense what i said might make sense if you want more information just message me down below um, in the comment section or email me i will try and put links into um the the different routes to becoming a psychologist in the description box so let me take a deep breath <laughs> so thank you so much for listening in today uh, please subscribe down below and continue to tune into thirsty song thank you very much bye